on everyone and welcome to the Texas Rando Show. This is episode 001 and today we are going to be reviewing my SCAR 16S. I've had this firearm since March of 2010 when I purchased it in Florida and it has been an absolute pleasure to be able to shoot and use this firearm. Uh, today, like I said, we're going to be doing a 10-year review of this gun. Not a single part has ever been changed internally on this firearm. And I just want you guys to see the condition of it. I want you to uh, be able to get a little more in depth with this gun and see the internals of it and what it looks like after 10 years. Let's go. All right, so this is my SCAR 16S. I purchased this firearm back in March of 2010, and it is now 11 years old. Um, and it pretty much up until two days ago, three days ago, was in completely a stock configuration. Uh, I did not have this flashlight on here, and this is a Kinetic Development Group rail, and I did not have it on here as well. I still was running the original rail system from the factory. Never had an issue with it, and never saw a reason to take it off. Uh, this is just a little bit different, so figured I'd try it out, see what they're about. And uh, so far, I like the modularity of it. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty decent system. So shout out to uh, Kinetic Development Group. This Surefire Scout Light, like I say, wasn't on here up until a couple of days ago. Uh, previously, I had been running a Surefire G2 with a set of uh, Viking rings, one-inch rings, and uh, never had an issue with it, so never had to change it. And uh, finally decided, let's, let's try something a little different. We ran the Surefires back when I was in the Marine Corps. Loved them, never had an issue with them. So figured I'd go on and step up to a Scout, and so far I've enjoyed it. So... This EOTech was actually the original sight that I put on this gun back in 2010. And there have been a few different iterations with this firearm. Gone to a one to four scope on it, uh, tried a smaller red dawn on it, and I've always reverted back to this EOTech. Uh, this is a 512 model. I purchased it in 2010, shortly after I got the gun. And it's pretty much been on there ever since. The only thing, there's two parts on this gun that I changed that have not been factory. One is the rear backup sight. This is a Troy Industries sight, one of their uh, one of their battle sights. It's been on here since probably 2011. Probably put it on there a year after. The original backup sight that comes on this gun, I didn't care for it that much. Had a little bit of a wiggle to it. Um, if any of you have ever shot these guns, I'm sure you have noticed that. That I didn't really care for. Um, and the pistol grip itself, I went on changing it out, put a mag pull on there. Uh, this one has a, a couple of different rounds in it. Probably going to change that insert out, throw a couple of 123s in it, be fine. Now... Also, up until about a year or two ago, yeah, probably two years now, uh, I still had the original uh, flash hider on this gun that comes with it, muzzle brake flash hider combo. Uh, it's uh, PWS makes them now, I think. But uh, anyways, this is actually a dead air muzzle brake, and I run a dead air suppressor with this gun. Uh, I actually have the L. I'm waiting on my S to come in. Uh, it is in processing, so that'll be fun once it comes in to put it on, too. Also have a 10.5-inch barrel for this gun from FN. It's a true FN barrel, uh, waiting on the tax stamp paperwork for it also. So once those two come in, this is going to be uh, even more fun than what it is now, and it's a blast already. So I I'm excited for those parts. All right, so like I said... This gun I purchased back in 2010, and let's talk about some of the ins and outs of any failures I've had with this weapon. There should be crickets playing right now. I have never in 10 years, well, 11 years of ownership ever had a failure from any factory component on this firearm. It, it has never happened. I've had magazines that I've worn out, specifically P-Mags. I've worn the feed lips out on them to the point that rounds will not stay in them, and they just pop out as soon as you slam a mag in. That is pretty much the only issue I've ever had with this gun. 
I've never had any failures to feed. I've never had a failure to eject. I've never had anything related to the mechanics of this firearm itself. Um, the gas piston system is still the original. It's still the original piston that's in this gun. Like I said, this gun is 11 years old now, had umpteen thousand rounds put through it. I honestly don't even know. I'm probably, if I just had to guess, we would shoot, uh, me and some of my friends when I was in Georgia, we would shoot a thousand rounds a weekend or a thousand rounds every two weekends. Um, and we did that for three years. And this is the gun I used. So do the math on that and you'll have a rough estimate of how many rounds are through this gun. It still has the original spring, the original bolt, the original uh, trigger group. Everything is still factory on this gun, minus these couple of little accessories. The barrel. Now, mind you, this is an 11-year-old gun. I am beginning to see a little bit of an opening on my grouping. That could be also because I'm a little older, but also... There's been thousands of rounds of this gun, and it's 11 years old. It's probably getting about time for a new barrel, in my opinion. The only other thing on this gun that is not original is the charging handle. Um, I just didn't like how small the original one was, and it's cylindrical, and those edges are a little bit sharp, and it's not very user-friendly when you have gloves on and such. So this is a kinetic de uh, development group as well. It's been on here for a couple of years now. I do have a triple G, a GG and G, non-reciprocating charging handle for this gun too that I had mounted on uh, what we will call the driver's side of the gun, the left-hand side of the gun. Uh, loved it, never had an issue with it, but the only thing you cannot do with that triple G non-reciprocating is you cannot force this gun into battery with that charging handle. If you have any sort of a malfunction, the only thing you can do is rack it back. You cannot force it to go forward into battery. Uh, most ARs have a forward assist button to help close that bolt and get it on locked in uh, into battery. You cannot do that with a non-reciprocating charge handle on this gun. So without further ado, Let's break this gun down a little bit and you guys can see uh, what is going on internally with this gun after 10 years of use. We are clear. So, you can see all these parts. This gun, like I said, is now 11 years old. And all of these parts, uh, I just cleaned and oiled it the other day, actually. Uh, we shot a little bit. Uh, is in immaculate condition. You can see there's normal wear on the bottom of the bolt carrier group. There's normal wear on the little tabs, the little what we'll call riding tabs. I'm not sure what the uh, technical term for that is but uh, little ears, but even from the gas piston, that's it. There's not even a divot. There's, there's not a divot at all present in the front of this bolt carrier group. This is the original spring that's 11 years old and has never been changed. I've never had a failure where this spring did not want to slam that bolt on home. Never in my life has that happened. This is the original. And as you can see, there's a little collar that's right here. It rides uh, around the guide rod and it has caused a little bit of wear on this tube, but that's it. Uh, you can even see on the uh, plate, there's not even any marks from the bolt carrier uh, contacting it, anything like that. This is 11 years old and still runs like a champ. Trigger group, the only wear that you can see on here is where the bolt carrier rides along the top of it. That's it. 
This is a stock trigger. It has never been changed. There's a little bit of oil in there. But uh, the spring has never been changed. Uh, the trigger spring down low has never been changed. Uh, nothing inside of this trigger group has ever been changed, period. Um, still functions like the day it came from the factory. The butt stock, you can see a little bit of wear from where I, I've ran slings on this gun. Um, this is still the original plastic uh, release button on this gun. Uh, there are companies that have put uh, metal ones out, but in 11 years, I've never had a failure, never had a reason to change it, period. And as for the receiver itself, This is the original receiver. There's never been anything that has been changed internally uh, on this receiver. I've taken the, the barrel group out several times and cleaned it um, very, very thoroughly, um, especially up around the piston area and around where these uh, ports are uh, on the top of the receiver. Uh, that gets a little bit of carbon buildup inside of it, but excluding that, this is the original. Um, it has never been changed. Uh, nothing internally, like I said, has ever been changed. And it, it still functions flawlessly to this day. So with that said, let's throw this gun back together. We'll do a quick function check and we'll call it a day. And some people might ask uh, why I'm running uh, the charging handle specifically on uh, what we'll call the passenger side of the gun. And the reason for that is when you are using this gun uh, specifically for the tactical games, uh, I shot with it uh, last year when we had the, uh, the skirmishes going on here in Texas um, at Triple C. The charging handle, if it is on the opposite side of the gun, when you go to throw this gun with a two-point sling onto your back, it catches on your plate carrier. It'll catch on certain items of clothing. And uh, so to prevent that, swap it over to the passenger side of the gun, manipulate it just like you would an AK, never had an issue. It, it functions almost identically to an AK-47 with it on this side. No difference. There you have it. 11 years old, still runs like a champ. So that is episode 001 in the books for the Texas Rando Show. I cannot wait for episode 002. I think we'll do a little bit more with this FNH. And like I said, this is my 10-year, well, actually 11-year review of this firearm after 11 years of ownership, still with the original barrel, still with the original internals, never had a failure from anything related to this firearm. All failures that have ever occurred have been from external sources, external pieces. Never from the original factory equipment has this thing ever failed. So once again, please take care. I look forward to episode 002. If you like this video, please click the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. Please leave me a comment. It only will make this show better. And thank you very much. Look forward to next time.